They say when you begin using drugs and alcohol as a way to change how you feel, to deal with life, that you stop growing emotionally at that age. So I was a grown man walking around with the emotional mentality of a 12-year-old, which led to a lot of homelessness. After the drugs and alcohol stopped working, it became a quest to use more drugs, to chase that feeling, because I, I couldn't get high anymore. I come from a background of broken home, a lot of emptiness in the family. There was a lot of, um, a lot of tragedy. I, I thought that was normal. I got involved with gangs uh, when I was in sixth grade. I was getting in trouble, doing stuff I was supposed to. I uh, got out of Sonoma County Probation Camp when I was 18. No probation as an adult. And I told myself, I'm gonna keep it that way and I, I hope it stays that way. A few months after that, catch another case as an adult. Um, I started using methamphetamines at the age of 14 on a regular basis, you know, not just here and there, but daily. And a lot of my mentors, you know, were older and criminal, criminal minds. <laughs> so I always tried to fit in. You know, I've harmed a lot of people in my wreckage. And I think just from hurting myself, um, a lot of people in the mix get hurt. But I would say definitely mostly my son probably hurt the most um, and didn't ask for it. I was deep in my addiction on drugs, methamphetamines, basically, doing scandalous, fraudulent things. And I was serving time in Santa Rita. I thought I was getting out, and Marin County came and picked me up. When I first came into the probation department and uh, I seen all those frames up there and pictures of people and a little summary from themselves and their probation officer, I told myself, damn, hopefully I could be um, on that wall one day. At first it was just a passerby, like I'm sitting in the office and I'm just gonna read. I'd see familiar faces up there, people that I had known for years or people that I had known from the streets or people that I've seen around. And to see that definitely gave me hope. You know, if they could do it, I could do it. Just walking in probation, seeing that, you know, in the back of my head, it's like, I want to be that. That's what I want to strive for. The wall change is a series of photos in our front lobby of the faces of the people that we serve and the stories that they have told to be successful. What it means to our department is part of our culture. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be offering services to these folks so they get their life back on track and they're no longer a public safety threat. Supervising you know, offenders is multifaceted. It involves, obviously, within the parameters of complying with conditions of supervision and keeping the community safe, but the real goal is to help them become successful on supervision, successful in reintegrating back in society. At times they are a little bit anxious about not knowing if they can handle what is expected of them from the courts, from us, probation. Yes, there is accountability. Yes, it's, it's up to them to take responsibility for their actions. But we as a community, as a society, should come alongside them and be able to provide all the resources so that they can be successful. I think that the true measure of success as a probation officer is not how many people you arrest or how many drugs you find. It's how many people do you really keep out of jails and courts. The Wall of Change was an idea that I obtained from a training that I attended and I brought it back to the Marin County Probation Department and spoke about it with a group of our staff. They seemed to really like the idea of celebrating the success of their clients that they serve. We developed some simple policies and procedures. We'll get their nomination from the probation officer. Why do you feel that this individual should be recognized and be up on the wall of change. And we'll get that story and the probationer's story, and we read him all as a committee, and we kind of talk about what does this person, how they made a significant change in their life to be up on the wall of change. And I've been in this business about 30 years and have worked for a variety of different probation departments, and I've never seen anything, anything like it. Typically in probation and parole, if somebody messes up, you know, immediately there's a response. Usually it's jail, it's some kind of sanction. But here you take someone that's succeeding and you're, you're putting a kind of a positive reinforcer to it and then you're celebrating it. And what that really does, I think, is it reinforces positive behavior. It celebrates all the effort that it took them to get to where they're at. 
and, and it allows other people to see it. To bring them back into a community begins with sharing those stories. So it was just like little trials and errors of trying to get my life together. And this last time getting clean, it was just the structure in my life and developing new role models that I wanted to be around and to live a life of goals that were different a life of working in the drug and alcohol field and dressing professionally and just doing things that are different than, you know, hanging out on the corner and, and becoming criminal minded. I didn't know anybody from Marin when I came out here. So when I got on probation, it was just Jennifer Saldana, you know, and she seemed like a hard ass <laughs> the first time I met her, but she really became a huge support. And I've been on probation before, but uh, this time I, I wanted to help coming into probation. I can remember sitting in Anthony Nunez's office, trying to find the help that I needed. I was gonna get into a, an outpatient program after I got out of my program. And we sat in his office for an hour, calling program after program. I mean, he sat there and helped me. And he was he was like, okay, let's try this one, let's try. And that's awesome, you know? That, that's, that kind of stuff right there matters. My house in Petaluma got raided at like six in the morning and my family was in the house, my two younger brothers and my, my dad, and they got handcuffed and put outside on the grass. I realized a lot after that case of, I need to make some changes in my life. I want to thank my probation officer that I still have till this day. In the four years that I've been on probation on her caseload, she has given me a lot of advice and uh, made me look at things different. I was afraid that, you know, if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, I'm going to end up right back in jail. I'm going to go to prison. I'm not going to ever get to see my children again. Um, you know, CPS was involved. And with that, you know, I had to walk a really straight line. So in the beginning, it was a lot of fear. And then from there, it kind of molded and shifted as I went along and I had more clean time and more time away from the streets, more time away from the people that, you know, I shouldn't have been around. That fear molded and shifted into, I'm building confidence. It molded and shifted into, I'm gaining maturity and I'm learning how to live a productive life. I had to go out and get a job. I, you know, I went to treatment. Being able to be held accountable where I couldn't hold myself accountable was a huge part. And it was Judge Sweet, who's a veteran. I'm a disabled veteran. And he said, look, we're gonna give you a chance. We're gonna take you out of here and put you in a harbor-like detox over in San Francisco. I got on this high security uh, uh, probation. And that's where I just like let go of everything and just explain what happened to me and that I'm willing to make the change. And I wanna make the change, but it's not easy, you know? I mean, I've been stuck with this jacket on for so many years. So it was a lot of work, you know, and I had to give it up. So I went to detox. I don't know when it shifted in my mind to see it that way. But when my mother died and I was in the program, Chris, Tom, my probation officer, was so cool, man. It's like, whatever you need, Tim, call me, you know? And I would call him, we'd just talk, you know, hey, I'm going through this, you know, and we would just talk. It's not about be over here, let me do this, piss test, whatever, whatever, work. It's on a human level, you know? And it's like, I never had that before. And of course, life shows up and things happen and we have adversities, but now the A book has taught me a way in the fellowship of dealing with stuff without using. One day my probation officer called me and said, you were nominated for the wall of change. You've been doing really good and been handling your business. And I was really proud of myself. And I told uh, my family and my girlfriend, and they were really happy for me too. You know, to be recognized for something, and you're not used to being recognized, you know, for positive things, I think is huge. I never had any kind of encouragement from anybody. Oh, you're doing good, or you're doing the right thing. Um, there was no kind of kudos anywhere. So when I heard that I was going to be on the wall of change, I was proud because it, it meant that I was going down the right track. It meant that there was people out there that were proud of me. It's hard to put it into words, the overwhelming joy that it is to know you're being successful. And then when I went to the actual ceremony, I didn't know how it was going to be, you know, it was going to be closed. I didn't know it was a big, big ceremony like it was. At the Wall of Change event, we have all criminal justice parties there. We have the district attorney, the sheriff, health and human services, the public defender, all the judges, 
of course, the probation department, the board of supervisors. We recognize the folks that have been honored uh, on the wall change every year. And the presiding judge issues certificates. It's a large event. It's emceed by nationally renowned motivational speaker, Michael Pritchard. We've been overstanding. Now, we try to understand. That happens if the judge will look at all the files. But what we need to do to help people, wall of change is all about understanding, recovery, redemption, restorative justice, looking inside for the answers. The answers for helping incarcerated people aren't outside. They're teaching them to go inward and to change what's inside until they find what is truly meaningful to them and helping them find their way and their pathway home. When you get them up and you empower them to speak their truth and you tell them, get real though, get up there, get real, these are judges. They're going to take lives away from people and incarcerate people. Tell them the truth. This saved me. Please help others find their way here. I won't be here someday, but I fully expect the wall of change to live for years and years because it's that important. It's embedded in our department. The easiest part of our job is to put somebody in jail. That's the easiest thing we can do. The hardest part is to provide those services and get somebody to, to, to want to change and then to make those steps to change. To see success, to see um, someone who actually makes it and gets successful, gets off probation, that is actually very motivating to me as a probation officer. I mean, you look at yourself, are you a different person today than you were 10 years ago? I hope so. And sometimes change is painful, sometimes growth you know, hurts. We go through different trials and tribulations, but all that to develop us and put us on that right path. And I think really the probation officer's job is to help the probationer grow. The biggest blessing in all of this, in all of this, which couldn't happen without their circumstances being what they are, is my mother got to see me sober before she passed. Ah, <sighs> my baby. He's six now. Everything down to regulating his emotions, getting angry, it's kind of like it's really cool to be present. I would say now that I'm not on drugs and alcohol that he can rely on me, which is huge, you know, and he trusts that I'm gonna be there to get him and he trusts that I'm gonna be there every night, you know. I'm a general service representative for my, my home group. I do probably 16 meetings a week. I go to DUI courts with uh, this guy and we do what's called the bridging the gap where we go into DUI courts and show people, you know, the AA program. I speak at recovery centers. I'm all about giving back, you know. And I think that's what the wall of change is. It's part of giving back. I feel like a productive member of society. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, I am a sister. These people trust me in their lives. Whereas before, I wasn't allowed to go to my mom's house. I wasn't allowed to, you know, be around my children. Now these people, they they welcome me into their homes. They trust me with things that I never in my wildest dreams would have thought. I, I work at a rehab facility right now, helping others get onto the path that I found. So honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness. If anybody has those, you're well on your way. Change to me is taking what you used to be and um, manifesting it into become something else. If that's what you want to do, go for it because it's never too late. Change for me is loving myself. That's the biggest change. Change is good, you know, change comes from within. Just keep pushing, one foot in front of the other, one day at a time. And I can't stand those cliche sayings, but it's so true because that one day at a time has gotten me through so much. I see change as opportunity. I see it as a way to do things better as it relates to the wall of change. If we could in any way, shape, or form be a part of that and help facilitate that change for that person, that means the world to me.